Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel for episode 5 of our FIFA 22 Youth to Gold save. Now, I've made some key tactical changes and they've really helped us out. I'm excited for you guys to see them in this episode, so let's dive in. Since you were last with me, we opened up the month with a 2-1 defeat to Crawley Town. They were bottom half of the table and they just outplayed us. We let up a goal in the 93rd minute. It said they were supposed to have one minute of added time and as we know, like the referees do in FIFA 22, they gave them three extra minutes and we ended up losing on a goal in the 93rd minute. We then took on Colchester, who were fifth in the league while we were sitting third, and we won 2-0. Now, I changed our tactic in this game to constant pressure so that we were gagging, pressing them the whole game, winning the ball back, and it worked beautifully. We followed that up with a 2-0 win against Barrow, and same thing, constant pressure, and that was our second squad. I was resting up the first team for the Salford game, which we then went and lost 3-1. We did constant pressure, and they just broke us down. Like I mentioned in the previous episodes, with the constant pressure, the issue we run into is stamina. Our guys get gassed, and at the end of the game, no one has any, any legs left, and the guys we bring on couldn't impact the game so for this Harrogate game I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna do pressure after possession loss so hopefully when we lose the ball we can win the ball quickly and get back on to the offensive attack so that leaves us once again third in the league five points off top of the table we have to get a win today to close that to a two-point gap Forest Green yet again still have a game in hand three points ahead of us, but we are four points ahead of Salford City despite losing to them. It makes it even more painful that we just lost to them because they would have been on 57 points and we would have been on 67, which would have been a 10-point gap. And I think the top three teams go automatically up to EFL League 1. So we need to try and get a win today against top of the league, Harrogate Town. Now, before we hop into this next game, let's take a look at Graham. He completed his move to right wing. He was a striker before, and he was a 52 overall, and now he goes all the way up to a 60. He has been lethal on the right wing. Playing with him has been a blast. With that 70 dribbling and his ball control, it's just filthy. He can dribble in and out of players. He keeps hold of the ball when pressured. And we mainly made this move because Matheson is no longer developing. I got reports back that he's not developing any longer. He's a 22 overall, so I know with enough game time and in good form, he could definitely continue to grow. But again, I'm going to get those young guys in and get them rolling. Now, if you've seen here, I've called Bjorklund and Sjoberg up to the first team. They both completed their moves to center backs and they both went up to a 55 when that was completed. Bjorklund's or, or Seoberg, sorry, has already gone up another overall to 56 and they've looked really good in these spots. I have King playing here in the center of the park. It still says it's going to take him 77 weeks to complete that move, but I'm going to keep with it. When he's playing in this spot, he gets into great attacking positions and again with the four star skill moves and four star weak foot, I think he's going to be a great attacking option once he finally completes that move and starts developing some of those key center mid traits now Menendez did pick up an injury in our last game he's out for four weeks so we're bringing Larson into the starting lineup and Robson moves back up to the bench as our backup in that position along with Schielberg and Bjorklund getting called up I also caught up Munoz I needed him with our tired legs and he actually looked pretty decent he cannot really shoot I took a shot with him and it was bad but he's fast and he gets into great attacking uh, positions by running into those channels. And with his pace, he can just run in behind. I think he's going to turn out to be a great striker for us. Now that I've caught you guys up with all of our squad moves, let's look at our starting lineup for the Harrogate game. Now, you guys might call me crazy, but I'm going with the youth. We need to develop these guys so that they're ready to go up into League One, into the championship. So I'm going to stick with them. It might make us slide down the table, but I think that faith is going to be paid back later on in the save. So Smith starts in goal, a back four of Osorio, Seoberg, Bjorklund, and Curry. Center midfield partnership of King and Mercer. The attacking three behind the striker are Schaefer, Larson, and Graham, with Vasquez still up top. So we are at the kickoff, and like I said, guys, we are on pressure after possession loss. So hopefully after we lose the ball, we can win it back quickly and get back on the uh, attacking foot. Well, that was a close pass. We made it through, though. Larson in the attacking mid is honestly not my favorite and the thing I'm most worried about for this game. He just doesn't get into the attacking positions the same way Menendez does. Is that a deflection? Yep, is a corner. But Larson 
he's not bad. Like I said in a couple episodes ago, really not bad, but he's not. He doesn't push the needle in the in the uh, direction I want him to. He just is kind of there, <laughs> almost is how I feel about him. Honestly, hopefully he can prove me wrong. Watch he'll score a crazy goal today or something. But he really just doesn't offer much, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. When we first signed him, and I think in the very first episode. Whew, Luckily, our goalkeeper was equal to that, but when we first signed Larson, I had really high hopes for him, and he just hasn't panned out how I wanted him to. Now, let's defend this corner well. Get up. Another option we do have that I've thought about is creating some different tactics. So, in the middle of a game, when we're chasing a goal or something, or maybe even early on... Uh, I guess I should focus rather than talking. Oh, <laughs> Luckily, it's offsides. Really fast before I lose this train of thought. If we can set up a couple tactics, that way I could maybe switch to constant pressure or pressure after possession loss or even maybe drop back, lock up shop. Who knows? But I really need to focus. This is a huge game. I thought we were going to score that. Vasquez up top is so nice. I like Frost, but again, it's just night and day difference when we have Vasquez in and when we have Frost in. Um... Vasquez just offers us a better attacking option. All right. Get Larson. King. Oh, just wide. See, King gets into those attacking positions often. I'm pretty sure that soon we'll see his first goal. Now, we have to remember that this is our, not second team. It's now our first team, but it is a bunch of young guys in the squad. Again, just trying to get that development rolling. Come on, Vasquez. Uh, but if we can get their development rolling and get this team up to a really good spot, that would be huge. I think that was Schioberg. The tall one, I think, is Schioberg, 6'3". He really looks good, even despite being only a 56 overall. Ah, uh, that was a bad pass from King. Great win by King. We're in. If we can get some runs forward. We got Graham. We got Schaefer back post. Oh, man. Beautiful. Schaefer drifts in. Cuts inside off the, off the back post. Oh, my lordy. First time volley. Just a beautiful, beautiful goal. Now we need to make sure we play some sound defense and keep them out of our goal and maybe get another one just for a little bit of comfort. All right, we have Graham out on this wing, just crosses it across. Schaefer gets it first time, opposite corner for the goalkeeper, no chance. Beautiful, beautiful goal. And here is the kick after the goal. Now, oh, Graham gets the ball there. King, back out to Graham. Y'all haven't seen Graham much, but really his dribbling is, uh, okay. His dribbling really is good. Um, he doesn't get pushed off the ball too easily. He's not the strongest, but just with his ball control, it feels like the ball is almost glued to his feet. Now, I don't know how I want to take this. I typically don't cross these in. I just pass them, and that's what I'm going to do here again. We have Bjorklund, Larson, King is in. Oh, I really wanted him to get his first goal on TV so we could all cheer him on. I think King is really going to end up being a great player. Part of the reason I just decided to go with the young guys, a big reason was the center backs. I need them to develop so that they're ready for League One. Another big reason was King. Like I said, I think it still says 77 weeks for him to become a center mid, and he really plays the center mid position well. Um, 77 weeks is just a little absurd. I'm not going to let that happen so I figured let's put him in let's get some games under his belt really start getting that development rolling um, so that he becomes a center mid quicker and then when he becomes a center mid quicker that's important because I want to be able to train him as a center mid and focus on the key areas that I want to focus on let me play some defense and shut up really fast oh no oh no great foot by Curry Whew. Oh, that got my heart beating real fast we're into halftime let's see if we can grab another one i think we have really got 
the beginnings of a good squad here. I think all we really need is another center mid. We have the right back in the youth academy. Um, incubating, like I said in the last episode. But I think that we really just need a center mid to take Mercer's spot. I like Mercer a lot, but I'm just not sure how long he's going to develop. Offsides there. I'm not sure how long that Mercer's going to de to develop. And again, we just got to get guys in who are going to develop with the squad. Now with dynamic potential, Mercer might be able to develop further after this episode. Or not episode, sorry, this <laughs> season. Um, we just got to kind of see. And hopefully he gets a boost to his potential. Get up, goalie. A dribbler in. Man, that was just poor defending. Our young center backs give a wide open channel. He runs in. He gets the goal. Well played. That's why I wanted to get another one for some insurance. Now, I just want to make sure we don't lose this game. And it just dribbles across the line. Mm. Here they are pushing us into our half again. Get up, Yorkland or Sjoberg. He's really tall. Really gets up and defends well in those sort of situations. I'm just not getting the attacking opportunities that I would like. They're back again, hitting an, us on this counter. Mercer trying to close down. Now King. Oh, man, that pass right there they keep getting. Whew. I need to figure out who that is and maybe make some adjustments. Graham's right, making a run back side. Wow, what a pass. <laughs> That's the one thing King can let me down in is his passing. Sometimes it's just wayward like that one. But he makes great defensive plays like that and gets into some really, really good attacking positions. Let's go. Beautiful. The heel flick from Larson after I was saying he just doesn't get it done for me. He makes that run in. We pass it into him and he heel flicks it back. That was gorgeous. Mercer smashes it home. Again, Mercer is getting goals regularly for us. Oh, man. That just was so pretty. Now, let's check and see if we need to make any subs. So the three subs I am bringing on is Rice at left back. Bernard comes in for King in the center of the park just to help us shore up the defense for this final 20 minutes, hopefully to get a win. Miranda comes in on the right wing. I want to give him some more opportunity. I haven't used him a ton, but I think there's a player in there. So let's get back into it and hopefully grab another, at least not concede. They start play again. I'm liking the pressure after possession loss. I, I definitely like constant pressure better. The issue, like I said before, is our stamina. I don't think we can really handle it, at least not yet. Maybe up. Oh, get in. Uh, maybe as we progress and our players develop, we get more stamina and stuff. We can maybe go to constant pressure. But I, I think the key to that, like I mentioned before, is just setting up a couple different tactics where we can switch it on and off. Now, they are attacking us here down our right side. Curry gets kind of done in. Oh, wow. He did the splits there, and I didn't even tell him to get the ball out of our zone. Whew, that was very scary. Crash it down this wing to Miranda, and I run right into him, and he uh, can't get anything there. They're still pressing us here, and they... Almost sent it out of bounds. Get up, goalie. Good stuff. Throw it out to Schaefer. He's going to be pressed soon. There we go. Oh, no. Bad touch by Rice. Oh, and great job by our keeper to keep it out. Let's get it out to Rice again. If we can just hold on. We got two minutes of extra time to play. And we will be in with a win against top of the league, Harrogate. Oh, I thought that was... Hey, we did it. We still sit in third, but that win puts us two points behind top of the league and four points ahead Salford City in fourth position. Now, Salford City won as well, so they went up to 63 points. We need to grow that gap so that we make sure we stay in the automatic promotion places 
coming up on the end of the season, we have seven games left. There's 24 teams in this league. In soccer, you play each team twice. Depending on the league, some teams play three. But in England, you play each team twice for a total of 46 games. So there's seven games left. And we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, as Nacho Livre likes to say. And hopefully we can come out and win the championship. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get there. But as long as we're in the top three positions, I'll be really, really happy with this first year. So... I'll be back in a minute with those scouting reports. Hide your kids, hide your wife. We are back with our first scouting reports. We'll start with the Youth Academy report. We have Ian Taylor still sitting in here, still 15. I wish it would tell you their birthday. Maybe it does somewhere. If it does, someone please let me know <laughs> if I'm just not seeing it. But I want to know when he turns 16 so we can bring him up. He is immediately going to be our starting right back simply because we want to get him developing. But he's looking insanely, insanely talented. Now, his pace is going up a little bit. It's really that acceleration at 60 that we need to get up. But I'm really happy with his development. He will complete his defensive winger training in one week, which is important because it gets his defensive work rate up to high. Then I think I'm going to change him to an attacking wide back just to keep that pace up and get the passing up so he can really become an offensive threat for us. Now, guys, we literally have drawn a blank on every single one of the scouting reports. The only one that I think I'm going to sign is Marcus Parker. Again, he's 6'2", and like I always say, you can't train height. So we're going to sign him. He's $250,000 value. I'm going to sign him, see what he has to offer, and he might already be out of the club before we even really get to use him, but we're going to check him out. He could be one of those center backs. This, boys and girls, is why you take flyers on players. Now, he's a 41 overall. I completely understand that, but he has 64 dribbling, 66 pace, and 50 passing. He is a center midfield, and I think it won't take that much time to train him there. Let's check it out. Look at this two weeks he's going to be a center mid he's five star skill moves five star weak foot that is insane for a 15 year old high attacking work rate he's six two man i'm gonna move him to center mid we'll check back in with him in a couple or in a month when we get the next youth academy report but i think this guy might be the one that will take mercer's position it'll be interesting to see what overall he goes to when we get him there I think the reason he's a 41 is his defending is 24 overall, which is terrible. But I think he's going to end up being that guy that plays next to King in the midfield. Now, I'm bringing you back for the game against Forest Green. Like I said, there are rivals, so I want to show you a Derby game at least once a season. And maybe next year when they're not in our league, or if they are in our league, we'll play them for our Derbies. But if they're not, We'll all come to an agreement on who our new rival is in the new league, and we will make that our derby game. But it's coming down to the wire. They still have a game in hand, and we're one point behind them in third while they sit in second. If we can win, we will overtake them. We will move up to 70 points, and they will still be on 60 or 68. Excuse me. Still have a game in hand, but it'll at least get us ahead of them. Now, for our derby, let's hop into the press conference. Do we think we will go up? They're asking us if we think we're going to get promotion. And I'm going to say that the lads deserve promotion, especially if we can go out and beat our rivals. Will you make changes now in terms of our tactics? We're ready for forest screen. Let's go and wipe the floor of them. That would feel so good. Last time we did beat forest screen. So they're asking what we're going to expect from the game. Let's say, um, let's do it again. Get two wins on the season against our rivals, and now let's hop into that game. We come into the forest screen game with no changes to the team. We have Smith in goal, Osorio at left back, Sjoberg and Bjorklund playing center back, Curry at right back, King and Mercer make up the midfield pairing, Schaefer, Larson, and Graham are the attacking three behind Vasquez, who is at striker. Now, let's go see if we can get another win. Our bench has been playing really well, coming on and getting goals, assuring up the defense. I think we are in with a shout of beating this team and overcoming them. I really think we can push for the championship this year. The game is underway. And I think their kits are so ugly. <laughs> if you're a four screen fan, I apologize. But I just think the green, I don't know. It's like a tiger stripe and they're in. Oh, man. Pulled the goalkeeper and he was equal to it. All right, they heard me talking about their uh, kits, and they did not like that one bit. 
We had Vasquez making a run. I didn't get the ball up to him. And now Osorio's laying on the ground. I'm going to chase back with Schaefer. Oh, no. What an incisive pass. Get the ball. Good save from our goalkeeper. I wish you would have held on to it, but luckily we didn't pay for it with a goal. Oh, Mercer. I was hoping he would get another goal for us. Sorry, I'm not, I haven't been commentating much because I'm really trying to focus. This is a huge game for us. Oh, we got a corner from it. I didn't even realize. So let's swing this corner in and get your head on it. Oh, Osorio with the bicycle kick attempt. Doesn't get it off, but it would have been real nice. I really like Graham out on this swing. I still don't really think y'all have seen much from him. He may add an assist in the last game on camera. The last game on camera was actually the game right before this one. We played that one, and now we're into this one against Forest Green. We've had a rough, not rough, but a challenging month. And now we are into this next month with another challenging game against our rivals. Uh, I shouldn't have taken that shot. Should have looked for a pass. They just keep hitting us on this counter and running right at us. I have to cope with it. Good defense from Schoberg. Poor pass from Mercer. I ran into trouble with him. Couldn't get it off. And now they're pressuring us down our left side. They bounce it past Osorio with the cross in. Our goalkeeper is there to snatch it up. I still really love our goalkeeper. And the fact that we got him in the very first episode still is just amazing to me. Oh, I thought Vasquez was going to make a run. And he stopped it. Sorry for the sniffles, guys. I'm still congested and a little... Um, not really sick. I guess I'm sick, but I don't feel really bad or anything. It's just that I have congestion. My wife's trying to help me out with that, though, so hopefully it'll be gone soon. All right, we have Curry running down the wing. He pushes it up to Mercer. Howard, or Graham, not Howard. I think I keep calling him Howard. I'm, I may have done that when introducing the squad, but Graham is in. He skips past one defender. What a cross. No one was there, but whoa, he whipped that in. All right, guys, looking good here. Larson, get the, oh, he had him. It was cut out by the four screen defender. Nice defensive play from him. I really feel like we need a win the way Salford City has been playing. They're right behind us. I really don't want to have to go to the playoff because then we would have to beat, if we finished in fourth, we'd have to beat the seventh place team, and then we'd have to beat whoever wins the game against third and in or fourth and fifth and or fifth and sixth. Eh. Luckily, they missed that, but I really don't want to have to win two or three games to actually get promotion. I'd love to just get it automatically. That is one of our objectives, which we're supposed to have done by the end of next season. But that is halftime. We haven't looked bad. They haven't really outplayed us. They definitely have had better opportunities than us, but we're not out of this game. So let's hop into the second half. And we are back. We haven't really offered much on the attacking foot. And again, I know Larson got an assist in the last game on TV, but he just doesn't feel like he links the play up the same way that um, Menendez does. Menendez really just feels wonderful to use and Larson he again he's just there I'm gonna rip this with Schaefer no he didn't <laughs> oh my gosh I mean dead fish uh, I didn't get it off but dead fish is a celebration where they flop on the ground but oh my lordy <laughs> I mean what a goal I just didn't really see a passing option, and he had a lot of space, so I figured let's rip it. Top corner. What a world-class goal from our star man, Schaefer. Now that puts us in the lead 1-0. to zero. We have to hold on to this lead. We cannot give it up. Vasquez wins it back there. It's great tracking back. I really wasn't expecting to win it back. I was just trying to pressure that guy. Oh, ref. Send him off. <laughs> Just a yellow. It was wishful thinking. I have lost games against 10 men before, so just because someone gets sent off doesn't mean it's a sure thing that we're going to get the win. Another issue I'm having with Larson is I need to figure out what foot he is. Let's do it again. 
No. <laughs> Guys. Now we gotta get a dead fish. Boop. There it is. Graham. I told y'all. Y'all haven't seen him much. That's two, two in a row. I can assure you I've taken that shot probably at least once for every single game we've played. Sorry about that. At least once for every single game we've played. And I think I may have made one. And now that's two in the biggest game of the season thus far. Oh, feels nice. Now those two goals are down to tactical style. You can't really put it in on FIFA um, other than I have those guys cutting in from the wings. But it's exactly why I like a left footer playing on the right and a right footer playing on the left because they can cut in and get those shots in, curl it around the keeper. And it's unstoppable when they can start to place it. And as we move up the league and push for Champions League glory, those sorts of goals will become more common, I assure you, just because the skill of our players is going to get better and better. Get in, Vasquez. And when that gets better, we're going to start getting more of these wild goals that are going to be insane for us. Oh, I really want King to get his first goal. <laughs> oh, man, I'm having fun in this game, boys. Let's check for subs. Sorry to kind of break up the play like that. We're going to bring Bernard in again to give us some defensive security. Um, we will bring Munoz in just so you guys get to see him. And our last trick will be we'll put Robson in at the center attacking mid. Just to see if he offers a little bit better of an attacking link up than Larson. So Munoz comes in for Vasquez up top. Robson comes in for Larson in center attacking mid. And Bernard comes in for King in the center of the park. Now those changes won't take effect until the next dead ball. So when it goes out of bounds or whatever. I know the ball is not alive. <laughs> it's always dead, right? But... Come on, Larson. Do something for me. Is a bad pass by me. I definitely tried to force it. I had a feeling he would cut that out, and he did. But we are up 2-0, which is a little bit of a cushion. In case they do get a goal back, I really don't want them to get a goal back because you guys have seen me fall apart many times. So just, oh, no. And our goalkeeper, I could kiss him. I could kiss Smith. We're not out of it yet, so let's focus. But... I mean, Smith has saved me on so many occasions like that throughout the season that you guys haven't even seen. He is a phenomenal little goalkeeper. I'm really excited to get him up into the United States team. Ah, they cut it out there. The attack is foiled. Let's see if we can press the ball off him. Ah, they break us down. I do have King back covering for Osorio at the left back spot. Now, switching our tactic to pressure after possession loss has helped us tremendously. If he would have crossed that in, it would have been a goal, despite the fact that it was off sides. But it's really helped us tremendously with our stamina. Our players aren't dying. I Like, every player on the pitch when we were doing constant pressure was at the very end of their stamina bar. Every game. Just get in there, Schaefer. Just running out of stamina when playing like that I really enjoy playing like that but it definitely was taking a toll on our players oh man guys I think we're gonna do it I mean it would be if we don't get it done here let's try it with Robson not even close <laughs> but if we don't get it done here we will have massively fallen apart I am trying to get Munoz just some game time he normally doesn't come on in big games like this but I figure we're 2-0 up and I think we're good for it. But I want to get him some game time. Get some stuff under his belt so that he can start developing. And we did it. Let's go get in there, boys. Oh, that is huge. I'm so excited to see where that leaves us in the league. Oh, man. Those two games against Harrogate Town and Forest Green turned out to be massive. Truly title-deciding games. Now, we've won both, but there's still work to do. We're equal points with Harrogate. But four screens still have a game in hand, and they are taking on Hardlypool, who sit ninth. So Hardlypool do have something to play for. Hopefully they can nab a draw or a win for us so that we still stay ahead of Forest Green. But we have seven or six games left, and it's coming down to the nitty-gritty, like I said before. So 
I will play these next couple games off camera. I'll bring you back for the next scouting update and Youth Academy report. Be back soon. All right, guys, change of plans. Since our forest green game, we took on Mansfield. We drew 1-1. We missed two late chances, and by we, I mean me, should have definitely come away with a win there. In the Leighton Orient game, we won 2-1. And I had all second team players in because in two days time we had to play Stevenage. Munoz was our starting striker, the 49 overall guy. And he had his first goal for the club and he also had an assist. He played Larson in and Larson slotted it away. And on top of that, he also won man of the match. I'm already liking this kid. He's fun to use in the game. We then went and beat Stevenage 3-1 and we beat Bristol City who were fifth in the league or were 2-0. So let's see why I'm bringing you back. We are currently top of the league. We have six games unbeaten in the league. We're four points ahead of Forest Green. They have three games to play, so they could get nine points, leaving them at 85. We have two games to play, and we can get 86 points. There's two games left in the season for us. So in the next episode, we're going to play both those games and hopefully win the title, and you guys can see our team lift the trophy on TV. Our run-in is Hardleypool, who sit in 9th, followed up by Bristol Rovers, who sit in 19th. Forest Green, on the other hand, have to take on Harrogate Town, who are still in 3rd place, followed up with games against Rockdale and Mansfield. Mansfield is currently in 5th, and Rockdale are in 16th. So, neither of us have extremely easy run-ins, but I want you guys to be watching when we lift the trophy, or if we lift the trophy. Hopefully we do. A couple more things before we go and wrap up the episode. Parker completed his move to a center mid, and as you can see, he went from a 41 all the way to a 50. We now have him training as a ball-winning midfielder so that his defending gets up and hopefully balances him out a little bit more, but I'm really excited to see how he develops. So that is the end of this episode. I know we only did one Youth Academy intake, but again, I want you guys to be able to see us close out the championship, hopefully. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get into this next episode and see what happens. I really did not think we would win the league in our first season, and we, we really have a shot at it. So I'm hoping we can string these last two wins together, close out the season on a high note, and then get into the summer transfer window. But if you like the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and comment. It all helps the YouTube algorithm, and I know everyone says it, but it really does help it grow. It gets it in front of more people. So to help me out, you guys can do those things. It costs you no money, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. We took care of Harrogate. We took care of our rivals for a screen. Now we just need to close out the season. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.